Hello, welcome to Dimension Quest. In this video, we're going to create a Windows 11 Pro 22H2 virtual machine in VMware Workstation 17 Pro running on Fedora 38 Linux. Now, before you get started, make sure you have a functional installation of VMware Workstation and an ISO image of Windows 11. I use Pro so I can join it to a domain at a later point. For this simple creation of a VM video, I suspect that any version of Windows 11 should work. Okay, let's get started. Now, there are a couple ways to get started with creating a virtual machine in VMware Workstation 17 running on Linux. First, we could simply click on Open a Virtual Machine here on Home, and then select an OVA or an OVF file. Or we could do File, Open, and select an OVA or OVF. But since we're going to build a brand new machine, not import one, we're going to select Create a New Virtual Machine. This also has an option under File, New Virtual Machine. So let's go ahead and get started with Create New Virtual Machine. Once the wizard comes up, you get a choice between Typical and Custom. So if you want to make changes and everything before the VM is finished creating and booting up, you can do Custom. This would allow you to add different SCSI controllers, connect to different network, add additional disks, adjust memory, all that different stuff or you can go typical. I'm gonna go with typical. So we can click next. Now, once you hit next, you'll need to know where you've downloaded your ISO image to. So I'm gonna click browse, and I have it under my downloads files right here. This is my consumer editions 22H2, um, updated September, 2023. So here's my ISO image, I'm gonna select that. And I'll click on next. Now I'm going to give this a name. Like, clear this down. I'm going to call it Win 11 VM. And this is the location that I want it. So I'll click Next. Now here, since we're doing the typical, it's going to do some extra th stuff for us. And since this is Windows 11, we do need to have TPM enabled. And I'm going to allow it to do the encryption. So I'm going to select my password here. Once I've typed the confirmation, I'll click Next. Now we need to specify a disk size. Now you probably want to go with at least 64, depending on what you're going to be doing with the VM, because the Windows system files do take a lot of storage space. You could go a bit lower than that. I wouldn't go any lower than 40, though, because if you plan on using the VM for a long period of time, the Windows updates and installed applications are going to eat more and more disk space. So. I would just leave it with the default of 64. And I'll go ahead and leave it with splitting the virtual disk into multiple files. So I'll click Next. And I am going to customize the hardware because I do want more memory than the four gig that's defaulted here. Since my system is pretty beefy, it has 128 gigs of memory, I'm gonna go ahead and give this 16 gig. So I'll just adjust the slider up to 16, 384. Processors two is fine. I don't need to enable any virtualization stuff on there. I've got the CD network adapter. I don't want to use NAT. If I did not have this lab, nested lab infrastructure uh, available here, I would go ahead and use NAT so that it can just directly connect to the internet through sharing my workstations NIC. But I am going to power up my PFSense and I want this VM connected to the management interface of my PFSense. So I'm going to select NAT management and I think the rest of these should be okay. Display, accelerate 3D graphics. I'll leave that as is. Graphics memory, I'll leave that as is. And I'll click close. Okay, so this looks fine. Automatically power on this virtual machine after creation. I'll go ahead and leave that checked. So I'm going to hit finish and then I'm going to power up my PF sense so that this VM has internet access once it boots up and it's able to get a DHCP address and all that stuff from PFSense. So everything looks good here. Click on finish. And we've got our little summary page here. I'll go ahead and leave this available. So I'm not gonna check that box there, close. So now while that's doing its thing, I'm gonna go ahead and power up this VM here. Start up the guest. And I'll press any key to boot from CD. Okay, 
English, US, US keyboard, that all looks good for me. I'll click next and I'll click install now. All right, I'm not going to paste in a product key in here because I am using an MSDN license here. So for right now, I'm just gonna say I don't have a product key and I will click that button there. Now I'll choose what version of Windows that I want because this is a MSDN ISO image. It does have multiple versions available for me. I'm just gonna select Windows 11 Pro and I'll click next. And of course we have our license agreement stuff here. So I'll click the little checkbox and that enables me to click the next button. And I'm going to select custom because I'm not doing an upgrade. I want to use my whole 64 gig disk. So I'll just click next and I'll speed this up. Okay, so that didn't take too long. We'll go ahead and let that get restarted here. Okay, now it has correctly detected my region, so I'll click yes. All right, so it does not want me to resize the screen quite yet. <laughs> this is the correct keyboard layout. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a name. We'll just call it simply Win 11 VM. Okay, so once you get to this screen, your choice may vary. You can go with uh, personal use there and click next, or you can go with setup for work or school. This would be if you wanted to have the system join into a domain or join whatever organization. So let's just go with setup for personal use for now. And we'll click next. And we can click on sign in. And what if I don't want to sign in? How can I escape out of this? Sign in options. Okay, so if you want to set up for personal use, you can go ahead and click here and you will have to sign into your Microsoft account or you can set up for work or school. This would be the option you use if you want to join into a domain. So let's go ahead and click on that. Click next. And let's see here. I don't want to do that. Let's try sign in options there. Here we go. Okay, so we can sign in with security key or domain join instead. Now, I don't have my domain controller running in VMware Workstation right now, but I do have that Zential domain controller. So let's see if I can join that running on my network here. All right, um, let's say, yeah, let's just use my Burke Lab account, the Blab. You've seen that in previous videos there. Next. And next. Okay. Now I'll just blur all of this out and skip past it. Okay, and I don't mind sharing that stuff. You can adjust as needed. I am gonna turn off advertising ID though. Accept. Once Windows is installed, you'll need to make sure that you install the VMware tools. So we come up here to VM and select Install VMware Tools. This will install the correct graphic drivers and network drivers so that Windows will operate properly. And we'll go ahead and run the setup. Yes. 
And I'll just do a complete install. Next and install. So the video driver just installed. That's why the screen went black. Notice how when I resize my VMware workstation window, the guest is now resizing properly. And we'll click finish. And yes, we'll restart. Okay, let's go ahead and get logged in here. Now earlier I did specify joining domain and I provided a username and password, but did I actually join the domain? I don't think I did because it never asked me for my actual domain. Let's check this PC. Yeah, see if I had actually joined the domain, then we would have processed the login script, which would have added my network drives here, which it did not do. So that's totally fine. The silly thing here is that that initial setup where you're provided your sign in options did not allow you to just simply create a local username and password. But by selecting the option that I did, where I did select a domain, it then prompted me for a username, a password and confirm the password. So that allowed me to create a local user account. Now I've already done a video on joining Windows 11 to a domain, specifically joining Windows to my Zential domain. And I'll link that in the top right corner. There it is. Go ahead and click that if you want to step through that process. But this concludes my video on setting up Windows 11 Pro running in VMware Workstation 17. All right, thanks for watching. And my next video will be on setting up SSH in Windows 11. Thanks, have a great day.